transcription factors. Okay, so transcription factors are proteins that control the rate of protein synthesis. And they do this by switching genes on or switching genes off. Another word we're going to use during this tutorial is going to be the promoter region, which is a short sequence of DNA at the start of a gene, which is basically the bit that RNA or DNA polymerase is going to attach to. Okay, so we're going to have two diagrams here. I'm going to give you a quick talk through, and then we're going to save a bit of space over here for controlling transcription factors. There's actually two different types, so I'm going to sort of split this diagram. One is going to be activators. So these are going to turn gene on, make gene expression happen more, and we've got repressors which are going to stop or slow down gene expression. So the diagram is going to essentially be the same. I'm going to do my DNA in black. Just the same as I drew my transcription diagram, this wing, the non-coding, the non-template strand of DNA, I'm just going to dot and it's just going to get in the way so I don't draw it. Now I'm going to draw my promoter region in blue here. And then the rest of the DNA is going to continue down there. This is taking place inside the nucleus. I'll put my nuclear membrane in afterwards. So for an activator, this transcription factor, which I'm going to draw in red, is going to bind onto the promoter region. And if it's an activator, I'm going to draw something with like a, a circular cup on the side of it. And that's going to help the RNA polymerase, because here we're making RNA, the RNA polymerase molecule to bind. And if it's a repressor, it's going to bind onto the promoter region and prevent RNA polymerase from binding on. Promoter region, DNA continuing off. I don't really care about the rest of it at the moment. So here, transcription factor. And this time, I'm going to just make it a spike so that the RNA polymerase can't attach. Ticking across. OK, we'll label this up at the end, but let's put some notes down. So maybe I'm actually going to number these. So the first thing I suppose that happens is that the transcription factor moves from the cytoplasm into the nucleus. Second thing it does is bind to the promoter region. Number three, we can say we're going to treat these differently. We can say activators are going to help RNA polymerase to bind. And as a result, gene will be transcribed and the gene will be expressed. Here you always want to talk about, this is transcription facts, you want to talk about transcription of the gene. The gene is transcribed. To say that the, the protein is made is not quite accurate because they want to know about transcription. I suppose it's really, well, I'm going to number them differently. It's not really a sequence. The fourth is repressors. So these prevent or possibly slow down, but let's say prevent RNA polymerase binding to DNA. And as a result, the gene is not transcribed. Okay, so let's finish off the diagram. This is all going on inside our nucleus, remember?
So there's my nuclear membrane. My transcription factors are outside and they're about to go in. So this is going to be my activator. And my repressor is going to look like this. That's my number one. Bind to the promoter region, so that's going on up here. Activators help it, help the RNA polymerase, repressors prevent it. Okay, and then maybe we'll just label it up in blue. So we've got DNA, obviously, the promoter region. We have our transcription factor. and RNA polymerase. I could label both, but I'm not going to. I think that's clear enough from what we've got there. Now we need to know how they're controlled, so controlling transcription factors. Okay, so generally the question is going to be on a hormone, which is going to be, uh, in this example, the one that AQA have to know, and the rest of you may as well use it as an example, is estrogen. Is It's a steroid hormone. Well, the estrogen binds to a receptor in the cytoplasm, and it's called the estrogen receptor. And this basically becomes what we know as the estrogen estrogen receptor complex. It's a bit of a clunky name. Okay, so this is a little bit like I would make the analogy to non competitive enzyme inhibition. Let's say we've got a molecule which is the estrogen receptor, and it's going to be a weird shape or a random shape. And so this is my estrogen receptor. And this is going to be my estrogen molecule. Maybe I'll make it, no, blue's okay. And when these combine together, when the estrogen joins the estrogen receptor, it's going to change the shape of this and make it functional. So this is now going to become a transcription factor. And it can actually become either an activator or a repressor, depending on the cell, depending on the gene, depending on a few things. But they're not going to ask you any of that. So it could become this, could become this. And this we'd call the estrogen, estrogen receptor complex, which is a transcription factor. And then this would then move into the nucleus and behave as a transcription factor like these would. And as I said, it can be either an activator or a repressor, depending on the cell, depending on the gene. They're not going to go into any details. And if they do ask you anything on that, that will, the information will be in the question. Edexcel have a tendency here to ask about second messengers. So how... The hormone of estrogen arrives at the cell, binds to a receptor on the cell surface membrane, and this can trigger cyclic AMP, the second messenger, to be released, and then activate protein kinase A, which can activate other transcription factors. So if you're edXL, I'm just going to give you a little, this is, I have seen this here, basically watch the video on second messengers, and the end product from protein kinase A can activate transcription factors. So again, watch the video on that. Hormone binds the receptor, activates, well, it depends, adenyl, adenyl cyclase. Check out the different examples, use different terminology. So watch the video on second messengers, and second messengers can be used to turn on or turn off transcription factors in the cytoplasm, which would then move into the nucleus and bind onto the promoter region and either cause it to increase the rate of transcription by helping RNA polymerase bind to the beginning of the target gene or prevent 
genes being expressed by preventing RNA uh, polymerase from binding. The significance is this is is that different cells need to express different proteins. All cells have all of the DNA, but only some are turned on. And which ones are turned on and controlling which ones are turned on determine what the cell's function is. And that's why it's essential you can control which genes are on and off. And this is the mechanism or one of the mechanisms by which we do that.